Here is another daily dose of airdrop alpha, including a bunch of tokens that are claimable today. So let's jump right in, starting off with the NIM token. So this one is for Dimension Stakers, mainnet launched today, and the token was dropped to your wallet address, the same wallet that you use to stake Dimension tokens. So if you use the Dimension portal, you can go to the top right hand corner and now there's an option to toggle between the Dimension network and the NIM network. And if you do that, you'll be able to see the balance of tokens that you got. Now, if it doesn't work, you can try pushing this refresh button. You can also disconnect and reconnect a wallet. And there's different options. You could have gotten this in a Kepler wallet or a Leap wallet as well, in which case you might just have to add the network to your wallet to see the balance. Now, in terms of what you can actually do with this token, it's not actually currently liquid. You can stake it if you want to, or you can just hold it into your wallet and wait until there's liquidity provided or if it's listed on centralized exchanges. You can actually transfer it, send it to different wallets, but as far as I know, there's no actual liquidity yet. So whatever prices you see when you go to make the swap aren't actually correct. And it's not until we actually have market price discovery that we'll have a good idea of what this one is gonna be worth. But anyways, congratulations to everybody that received this airdrop. It's the first for staking dimension and hopefully it's not the last and certainly not the biggest. Next up, if you've been participating in the DGEN airdrop campaign by using the Warpcast application, you can go and claim your rewards for season three airdrop two. So all you have to do is go to the dgen.tips website, go to airdrop two, and then there's a claim button here. Another Warpcast related airdrop that's actually live right now, you don't have to claim it, but it might've been dropped into your wallet if you're one of the top users of the Warpcast application is the farther token. So there's some information on this. Basically they're dropping 25% of the token to high quality Farcaster users. And in order to get it, you have to have the Warpcast power badge. So if you use Warpcast and you're one of the top users, you get this little badge by your name. So if you have that badge, I would recommend going to check the wallet that you've connected to Warpcast and see if you got this airdrop. In order to see the balance, you can copy and paste this contract address into your wallet. I'm not sure if it's actually live on DBank yet to be able to check your balance that way. Another claim that is live is for layer three. Now this isn't technically an airdrop, but if you've been farming the layer three airdrop by completing all of their quests, you can claim your rewards for one of the five tiers. And this is just based on the level of points that you got. The more points that you got for mission 200K, the higher the rewards that you get. The bottom one I think is like $2, yeah, $2.44. And the top prize for tier one is $32. Okay, next up, just a quick reminder that if you haven't yet claimed your DOP tokens for participating in that test net, you have less than a month now to claim. And if you don't claim, the tokens will be forfeited. So definitely go and visit the claim page if you want to actually secure your allocation. It's a mainnet transaction, but luckily gas fees are quite low. And if you wait until nighttime in North American time zones, you can claim your DOP tokens for basically a dollar or two. Next up, the eligibility checker for the Drift airdrop is live. So you can visit the page. All you have to do is copy and paste your Solana wallet address. You don't actually have to connect anything and you'll be able to see your allocation. I believe the minimum allocation is 200 Drift, but they actually have an interesting mechanic where if you claim right away, you get half of that amount. But if you wait six hours, you get the six hour bonus and you get basically double the allocation. So what this means is basically on claim day, you have to decide whether or not you want to claim immediately and sell, or if you wanna wait six hours and get double the allocation, and then hopefully the price of drift doesn't drop by over 50% while you're waiting for that six hour bonus to come through because otherwise it wouldn't actually be worth it to wait. Personally, I think I'm gonna wait the six hours to get the full allocation. Although after the six hour bonus kicks in, I imagine we'll see a dump in the price of the drift chart. And by the way, this airdrop is 12% of the total supply of 1 billion tokens. So 120 million being dropped in round one of this airdrop and they haven't actually released a date yet for the claim. They say they're gonna be announcing that soon. If we look at the tokenomics here, they've actually bumped up the launch airdrop amount by 2% from what it was originally supposed to be, which was 10%, but there's still a pretty solid community and ecosystem allocation. And they've said there's gonna be future rewards for continuing to use the platform. Now, I have actually not traded that much on Drift. I focused much more so on Zeta markets, and I'm hoping that we're gonna see the Z token come through soon. Speaking of Zeta, but not the perp decks, this time I'm referring to Zeta Chain, the L2 on Ethereum, they announced that a snapshot of the XP program has been taken. So if you have been completing those tasks and earning experience points for the Zeta Chain airdrop, the phase one snapshot has occurred. But of course, as with every airdrop campaign, 
it's not the end of it. Next up, the Milky Way team announced that they just raised $5 million in a seed round. So that's pretty positive because it means they actually have some capital to fund liquidity when they drop the token. And I think there's probably still some time to farm this airdrop. All you have to do for Milky Way is liquid stake Celestia tokens, and you can use it in DeFi if you want to. But the interesting thing about this is that you can potentially earn TIA staking airdrops while still having liquidity of your TIA tokens. I've spoken about Milky Way a number of times before on the channel, so I'm not going to get into it now. But seeing them raise this amount of capital is definitely a big plus for the potential airdrop. Okay, next up, I saw this post from Bankless, but apparently there's another new Ethereum L2 launching called Redstone XYZ. And it's going to be a gaming L2 built on the Optimism stack. So kind of similar to now at this point, we have base, we have mode. They're building up a bunch of different chains that are launching with the OP stack and Redstone is the latest one. So a lot of people ask me all the time, what should I do if I'm starting completely from scratch? I haven't farmed any airdrops yet. I would say opportunities like this, a new layer two blockchain that has literally just launched today means you can get in on the ground floor. If you bridge to Redstone today, you'll be bridging on the first day. You can't possibly have any more distinct months, weeks, and days of transactions and interaction history if you get in on day one. Now, since this is so new, I definitely don't recommend bridging a significant amount of capital. They've actually linked the bridge down here. So it's redstone.xyz. And if you're planning on experimenting with this, I would bridge, you know, like 0.01 or 0.02 ETH, just a small amount to pay for transactions. And you can start experimenting with the chain. I haven't actually had a chance to do this yet, but apparently there's already a few games that are currently live and you can experiment with them. Now for Redstone, there actually is one time sensitive thing that you should do if you wanna get in on the ground floor because they just launched a commemorative NFT and it's only gonna be live for 24 hours following the launch. So 20 hours left in this mint. Now in order to mint this limited NFT, what you need to do is first bridge to this new Redstone L2 Unfortunately, there's only a bridge right now from Ethereum mainnet. I'm not aware of any other third party bridges that have integrated this network yet. So you can bridge from ETH mainnet to Redstone with a small amount of ETH and then go to this mint page, connect your wallet and mint the NFT. And then it looks like for the next two weeks, they're gonna have daily NFT mints on to celebrate the launch of this. But I would say having the origin NFT is probably a good thing to have. Anyways, if you are looking for a brand new airdrop opportunity, this is solid because A, it's an Ethereum L2, which generally would have better airdrop potential than some random dApp. And then also, of course, you're getting in literally on day one and you can get the origin NFT. Okay, next up, let's move to the mode ecosystem. So there's these Photon and Orb NFTs, which are gonna come with a mode token allocation. And each of the different apps that are built on the mode L2 have an allocation of these to distribute to users. And Swap Mode today announced that they're dropping 1,000 photons to the top 1,000 users of Ionic Money. So if you are in that top 1,000 users, it looks like you're gonna be getting a drop of those Photon NFTs. Now, I don't think Ionic Money themselves have actually announced any drop of Photon and Orb NFTs yet, but regardless for all of these different applications, it looks like they're really rewarding people that are in the top of the leaderboard. So Kim Exchange had something similar, and I'm sure the other dApps are gonna do the same thing. The higher that you can rank on the leaderboard, the more likely that you're gonna get some of these Orbs and Photon NFTs. Speaking of Orbs, Let's move now to a switchboard, but this is within the Solana ecosystem, completely separate from the mode airdrop. I know all these people are using the same terminology. We've got two Zetas, we've got two sets of orbs, but switchboard is a new price oracle within the Solana ecosystem. And they have an airdrop campaign on right now. And they released a post explaining how you can collect more of these orbs and maximize your potential airdrop. So I'm going to leave this post down below. They basically give you a breakdown of which different apps in the Solana ecosystem you should be interacting with to earn orbs. And then there's also a hint that there's going to be final quests and you can go join the Switchboard Discord in order to actually get roles based on XP from those quests. So check this thread out if you're interested in this one. Okay, next up, Farcaster, which is this new social media platform for Web3 that's trying to compete with Twitter and Lens and FriendTech. They have 10 different collectible NFTs and they just released the final one. They posted this today. I had been speculating that having these might be a good thing to have in case Farcaster actually does an airdrop. And today they released the 10th one, which is a Jaguar. So if you want to mint these, 
I just minted one and they cost, you know, the same as any other mint on Zora. And we'll see if having all of these or as many as possible will have any airdrop relevance. I think it's kind of a speculative bet, but I don't mind minting one because I'm trying to mint a Zora NFT once or twice a week anyways. So I went ahead and grabbed that. I have a few of the other ones. I definitely don't have all 10 though. Okay, next up, if you are looking for a new perp dex to trade on after Hyperliquid and LogX and a couple of these other ones, Drift, drop their tokens, Intent X is potentially a solid target. They currently have a Galaxy campaign on. This is a perp dex on the Mantle L2. And if you complete all of these quests here, you get NFTs. And it looks like if you complete all four quests on Galaxy, you'll get four NFTs, which you can combine for a full NFT. We've seen some similar concepts to this before. For example, the Chroma campaign had this exact same mechanic. And when Intent X actually does an airdrop, it's very likely that having this full NFT is going to be relevant. And the good thing about this is that it's actually potentially a three for one airdrop target because you can deposit USDE tokens from Athena. So you can get the Athena round two airdrop. You can get an Intent X airdrop and potentially some airdrops from the Mantle ecosystem itself. And then the final thing that I wanted to mention today is that if you were having some issues with your Gitcoin Passport ZK Sync stamp, you can go try to refresh and see whether or not you've been bumped up from whatever level you were at before. Gitcoin Passport has revamped that stamp, so you might find that if you go back and refresh the page, you'll have more points than you previously did. And remember, for Gitcoin Passport, if you can get over 20, that's ideal, but the higher the better. If you can get over 30 or even 40, then that's going to mean you are not marked as a Sybil if any airdrop project actually decides to use Gitcoin Passport as a multiplier or a qualifier for that airdrop. And then the final thing I'll say is that today is May 1st and I recommend you go and push through transactions on all of the different L2s you're farming and the different bridges and apps as well because if there are snapshots coming up this week, for example, you now have an opportunity to get a transaction in a new distinct month. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you found this useful as always. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.